in the last seven games we have one win five draws and one loss in all of the games that we have lost points in we were winning we were in the leading position and yet we either drew or lost that game to make matters worse in four of these games we conceded a penalty in the last few minutes due to individual mistakes and that's what we call self-sabotage it doesn't even end there in our last three games, we have played against pretty much championship level teams and we have struggled in all three of them. This just shows how clueless and rotten this team is. Even Burnley, who we have just played, even they have a better record, better form in their last seven games than us. And they are a team which are in 19th and battling relegation. That's just how bad United are playing right now. This team has poor quality all across the pitch, whether it's defense, which will attack. And I will talk about the refs later as well, how disgraceful these refs are. But let's focus on the team right now. In the first 20 minutes, we actually had proper control, full control of the game. And Bruno could have had 2 or 3 assists very easily if our players could finish. Garnacho had a chance in the opening few minutes, he missed. Anthony had a chance, he missed. Bruno was through on goal, he didn't shoot. Then later on in the game, Anthony again had a chance, he didn't shoot. Bisaka had a good chance. He just froze, couldn't, he didn't even do anything. It's just that we had so many chances, 27 shots in this game that it had, and yet we couldn't score a proper goal until a Burnley mistake. That's just so frustrating to see. Not only were we wasteful, we were getting dominated by Burnley. Not in the terms of chances, we both had chances, but just having the ball. How are we at Old Trafford losing in possession against Burnley? Burnley had more possession than us. This team is a joke. Ten Hag is at fault for this, right? Because how he sends the team up. But also the players. Like, three games in a row, three championship level teams, and we are getting dominated by in each game. Like, that's just disgraceful. After the first 20 minutes, it was all Burnley, at least till the uh, end of the first half. Burnley had so many chances. Onana made two great saves. One was a reflex save from a header and the other was a 1v1. It was because of Onana that we stayed in the game. But it was also because of Onana that we drew this game. I don't know why Onana has this bozo gene in him where he has a mistake in him. I thought he was doing well over the past month but last game and now this game he has made two mistakes, two points. He somehow turns into Mike Tyson randomly. This is the third time he has punched a player. Third time. And this all happened because of Casemiro. Casemiro made such a silly mistake for a veteran player. Like why was he passing back to the player, passing back to the keeper when there are like six Burnley players around him. Like that was just such a stupid mistake and that costed us the win. If you like my video so far, then I would really appreciate it. Then click on the like and subscribe button below and to be a part of my community. It wasn't all bad. Yes, it was pretty bad, but there were a few players who played well. Maguire, who was once again one of the better players on the pitch. Maguire made two or three very good interception attackers, which prevented a goal as well. Then there was Bruno, who easily should have had two or three assists, very easily. There were such easy chances that the players didn't finish. Bruno was playing really well in this game. But he also made a few mistakes towards the end. So Onana made a few good saves. Anthony was actually playing well. He had a few good chances. And the goal that he scored, that was a pretty good goal because he was under a lot of pressure. He was imbalanced. And yet he found the bottom corner. And the surprising thing is, it's his first goal at Old Trafford since he scored against Arsenal last season. That too early in the last season. So, this... This, this team is in the lowest of the lowest right now. And I don't even know if they can improve for the rest of the season. That's a sad thing about this. Moving on to Ten Hag. I don't even know what to say to Ten Hag now. Ten Hag subs were really weird once again. Why is he taking off our only striker, Island and Menu once again? Like, I understand Menu is there. I understand Menu is under playing a lot of games, a lot of minutes. But still, why are you subbing him off once again? And he brought on McTominay. McTominay was fine, but sadly he got injured once again. Then he brought on Amrabat. So my question here comes is, why is Mount even here? 
माउंट वॉज सब्सिट्यूटेड इन द नाइनटी फर्स्ट मिनट वाई वॉज माउंट इवन बॉट एट दिस पॉइंट बिकॉज इफ यू इज गेटिंग सब डॉन ऑन नाइनटी फर्स्ट मिनट देन टेन हार डज इन नो वे टू प्ले येस हॉल इन वॉज इन हैविंग अ गुड गेम बट जस्ट लुक एंड दिस द मोस्ट पास इज हॉल इन बॉट वॉज फ्रॉम ओनाना दैट्स रेडिकुलस I've been saying it video after video after video that Holland doesn't get chances in a team, and yet people have the balls to say that Holland is a bad player. Like, how is he supposed to perform if he doesn't get chances? And one thing Ten Hag is doing wrong, really wrong, is his post-match comments or even press conferences in general. In this comment, right? Like, what is he even trying to say that the 2004-5 team wasn't playing well? They were in the process of building. That was under Sir Alex Ferguson, and they were playing a lot better than us. So it's like comments like these, which are turning the fans who were supporting him into hating him. And now it feels like he's lost a lot of support in the fan base, and he will continue to lose it if he keeps making out these weird comments. Now let's talk about the main issue: the referees. The referees this season have been the worst I've seen in all of my time. watching football game after game after game they are inconsistent they change the rules whenever they want to and it almost always against united let me give you some examples right now in this video you can see relish you can see young and you can see bisaka relish get gets hit on the hand no penalty young gets hit on the hand no penalty bisaka gets hit on the hand penalty right Moving on, Burnley player gets hit on the hand, no penalty. So these four instances all happened within one week, within seven days, and only Bissaka one was given as a penalty, and the rest three weren't. So that's one of the penalties that we were denied because of this Burnley handball, which should have been given because the Bissaka one was given. Next, some older issues. Casemiro given a red card because he choked a player, choked. But then Nottingham player does the same to Bruno. Right, and the Bruno one is even worse because there's no fight going on. This guy just goes up and grabs Bruno's uh, throat while they were arguing. That guy didn't doesn't even get a yellow card. This foul is done by Lamptey on uh, Gabriel Jesus for the Arsenal game. Right, Lamptey does get a little bit of the ball, right, but then he tackles Gabriel Jesus and it's given as a penalty because it was deemed that the foul is taking out too much of Gabriel Jesus. Even though Lamptey got caught the ball, but now this, the this guy, I think he's called Sanderberg. He touches a little bit of the ball, but takes out Ganacha completely. No penalty. So how are these two cases different? Lamptey touches the ball, takes out Gabriel, penalty. This guy touches a little bit of the ball, takes out Ganacha, no penalty. And what's even worse in the Dallow case. When he barely touched Madueke, right? He was knocked off, like he jumped straight up, and given as a penalty. So it's not about strength; it's not about touching the ball, right? Both of those given a penalty. So why was this not given as a penalty? It's just so weird how it's not given a penalty in United States always. And then in an- another instance, in this picture, this guy literally kicks Ganacho. He is nowhere near the ball. Doesn't touch the ball. Just kicks Ganacho. Ganacho falls. No penalty once again. So how is it that in the case of United the rule changes? It's so weird to me. Another instance is that when Holland very likely grabbed Rodri during a set piece, and of course Rodri, who's over six foot, right, six foot two, six foot four, he just falls over because of a little grabbing, which is a dive, but the rem is as a penalty. On the other hand, here Gabriel is literally holding Holland back. While Gabriel is nowhere near the ball, doesn't even get checked. Then in the next picture, Odogi literally has two arms around Ganacho. He is literally holding him from running towards the ball, not even as a penalty. So again, the rule changes just because it's against United, and it's not only about United. These referees have been bad against every team in the league. Nottingham Forest filed a complaint, not a complaint, but like a tweet about how bad they have been because this Ashley Young won, right, in the top right. This one might decide their relegation because they lost that match. 
then this foul doku on alistair right there should have been a penalty city would have lost points liverpool would have gained point would have changed the title race then the liverpool spurs one which was a total disgrace even that one liverpool suffered a defeat because of referee's incompetence which was clear cheating anyone could see that how bad the refs were second defeat liverpool has suffered because of the refs then another game where kovacic was already on a yellow card and does this challenge on odegaard studs up on the ankle right straight up uh, storm doesn't get a second yellow somehow he slides in with four studs up no way near the ball doesn't get sent off so it's a common theme that city gets decisions in their favor the united gets you know rolled over for every decision and on both ends of the table whether it's relegation whether it's title race outside of city everyone is suffering from these decisions so at what point do the referees take some responsibility at what point do referees have some consequences for such poor quality throughout the whole season and war as well war is of no help our next few games really difficult rest of the season crystal palace have been really good against uh, glasgow it will be very difficult to match then we have arsenal then we have newcastle then we have brighton and the last match is city these five matches i don't know if we can win even one that's how bad we are so if we don't even win one more like if we are, if ten hag loses even one we will be sacked i think and there are already reports that ingos is already negotiating with tushil for the manager position i personally don't like tushil right he is a very violent personality and i don't even like his style of play so at this point i just want the season to end so that the rebuild can start there's a lot of wrong with this team both the manager and the players are at fault i don't know which one goes first if manager goes first or if the players goes first but there is a need of a rebuild no matter what happens now if you have watched my video so far then please do click on the like and subscribe button below and if you want to see how bad we were in the shifting match then you can click on the video right here i will see you all again after the next game against crystal palace thank you for watching my video goodbye